Gun deer season is less than two weeks away and ammunition is still in short supply. NBC 15's Elise Roma spoke with product sellers and makers about the shortage and Elise, they say this ammo shortage has been going on since the pandemic shutdown of March of 2020. Maria, those professionals who have been in the business for decades tell me that this is the longest they can remember that an ammo shortage has lasted. They say if you don't have a supply of bullets yet, it's probably too late. Right now, we don't know tomorrow if we're going to have what we need to, to manufacture our ammunition. Daniel Butcher is a gun and ammunition manufacturer in Evansville for Red Legion Defense. Our components are three or four or five times more than what we've ever seen them. Butcher says regular suppliers who used to be able to provide everything in one order for bullets can't anymore. That supplier now has everything, all of our components on back order. But people are, are afraid to get rid of whatever or try to part with whatever they have in excess. Brett Fankhauser, owner at Deerfield Pistol and Archery, is having a similar problem on the seller side. Hunting-wise, it must be thin all over the place because um, we get, we've gotten more phone calls this year than any other year looking for ammo. Both men say this shortage will likely have an impact on ammo for gun deer season in Wisconsin. As far as hunting ammo and, and rifle ammo and stuff like that, it's not our forte. A little bit we get, we sell with the guns that we have, you know, and they're, they're few and far between too right now. You can't get the components you need to make the uh, calibers for the deer season, for Wisconsin, for the Midwest. That ammunition is pretty much non-existent right now. If you can find it, get it. Until the market changes, sellers and manufacturers are stuck. We're not ordering it for people anymore because I just no idea when I'll get it. And I ship out what I make and let's see what happens tomorrow. Many people point to the inflated sales of guns at the beginning of the pandemic for this shortage. The FBI actually reports that people purchased 39.7 million guns in 2020. That's more than 11 million the previous year. In the newsroom tonight, Elise Romas, NBC 15 News. Car thefts in the Madison area are more common than they used to be. Investigative reporter Elise Romas shows us who's committing these crimes and what's being done to handle the situation. For her safety, we're concealing the victim's last name. Somehow my garage door is up, my car is gone. That's the voice of Madison resident Glenna. She called 911 after her car was stolen in September. So I walked out to the street and looked both directions to see if I saw my car. And it hit me that I had been robbed. Glenna says she locked her doors before going to bed. But in the morning, she found out a thief had somehow broke in through her garage attached to the kitchen while she slept. So needless to say, I was devastated. During the burglary, the thief stole two computers, an iPad, Glenna's purse and wallet, and her car keys. Glenna called Madison police and filed a report. Then on Monday, a policeman from Fitchburg calls and he said, well, we found your car. Glenna got her car back. It wasn't damaged, but she would get a huge shock the next day. Glenna went to the Madison Bridge Club. She owns the place and stopped by to do some maintenance, but ended up calling 911 again. And I'm sitting at the desk playing bridge when this huge SUV pulled into the parking lot. He has the fob to my car. And the fob was in my purse, the fob for my car. So that's why, even though I had locked it in front of the bridge club, he could unlock it. He just took it off and went south on Todd Drive. I need in your vehicle? Yes. Most of these crimes are, are committed by uh, juveniles that range anywhere from 12 years old um, up to 17 and 18 years old. Lieutenant Edward Hartwick with the Fitchburg Police Department investigates these crimes. We are impacted by the same groups of juveniles that are active throughout Dane County and really a lot of the surrounding counties. From 2016 to 2017, Fitchburg Police saw a jump in car thefts from 24 to 67. Madison and Middleton have also seen an increase. Those numbers have stayed consistent over the last few years. Most of them involve the same group of teens. It's hard to put a number on it because the group grows every day and then just when we think that we've identified people that are part of one group then a next a next group comes comes along and starts engaging in this type of activity police investigation shows these groups of teens are connected on social media many brag about what they've done their perspective is that this is a game consequences are often never real and until they're in the middle of it and um, we're always afraid that something's going to happen, whether it's a, a car crash 
or a confrontation with a homeowner. None of us are safe anymore. Glenna wants to spread the word that it doesn't matter where you live, crime can happen anywhere to anyone. We have felt safe in this neighborhood forever and probably didn't start locking our front doors till maybe five years ago. I would like people to be more aware. I asked Lieutenant Hartwick if there's a way to stop these groups of teenagers from committing these crimes. He said for that to happen, more than one thing has to change and that it'll be a team effort from the community, law enforcement and the justice system. In the newsroom, Elise Romas, NBC 15 News Investigates. For roughly 90 years, the village of Cassville here wanted a bridge connecting their side of the Mississippi over to Iowa. The town sits, as you know, on the western edge of Grant County. You can see that here that the division between Wisconsin and Iowa runs through the middle of the river. Well, whether it was the Great Depression, World War II, or a changing economy, the timing's always been off. Arlise Romes shows us there's a new spark of hope from President Biden's $2 trillion infrastructure plan. Because of the President Biden's infra infrastructure plan, this is a distinct possibility. Lifelong Cassville resident Joe Plessel sees a glimmer of hope to a long-awaited bridge project estimated to cost $175 million. We feel we've earned it. Plessel saw some drastic changes to the village economy, especially after two power plants supplying jobs to at least 100 people shut down within the last few years. We lost at least a half a million dollars a year in payroll. Our population went from 1,300 to 947. Village President Keevan Williams tells me a bridge branching over the Mississippi to Iowa could be the solution. If the bridge was here and there was more access to the highways, um, I feel that there would be more possibility of businesses locating here um, to create more jobs. Williams also says it would benefit long-haul truckers and farmers transporting goods between states. Preliminary plans show the bridge would replace the current ferry that operates from May through October. This is the longest stretch of the Mississippi River that does not have a bridge crossing. And when you look at Dubuque and Prairie du Chien, we're pretty much right in the middle. The Badger Hawkeye Bridge Coalition takes these plans a step further. They're working with engineering students at UW Platteville to design what the bridge would look like. We could create a new economic corridor. To finally make this plan a reality, federal funding is crucial. And that's one of the things they're talking is highways and bridges and stuff. We feel that this at least warrants being looked at. In Cassville, Elise Romas, NBC 15 News. And before anything can happen, there needs to be a feasibility study and support from legislators. Cassville is in State Senator Howard Markline's district. We reached out to him to hear what he has to say about the project. The Cassville bridge idea is certainly an idea to discuss as part of the overall state budget. This would be a massive investment in a project that would require interstate collaboration with Iowa. Markline added he will speak with his fellow lawmakers about getting on board with the idea.